What's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2010 Toyota Camry XLE. Up front is a 3.5 liter V6 and down below is a six speed automatic transmission. Now I'm super excited to be driving this Camry because it's been a little over a year and a half since I've been in the saddle of one of these generations of Toyota Camry. I think it's one of the best used cars you can buy, especially with that V6. And so we'll get into that that a little bit later on. But if you would like to submit your own vehicle and have it reviewed here on the channel, just like this Toyota Camry is being reviewed today, you can head on over to my website, zachpradle.com submit. It's a quick and easy submission form. It takes under a minute to fill out and I accept all makes and models, whether it's a 2010 Camry, a 1928 Ford Model A or anything in between. But let's get back to that 3.5 liter V6. Well, that is sort of the whole holy grail when it comes to this generation of Camry. There were two engines offered, the 2.4 liter inline four, or you could bump it up to this, the 3.5 liter V6. The reason I say it's the holy grail is A, because of the power driving around town. The V6 is wonderful. It's potent, it's durable, and it has that low end grunt that a four cylinder just doesn't offer. However, adding on to that, the 2.4 liter four cylinder had oil issues. They burned oil a lot. They were very reliable engines, but you had to top them off with oil every so often. The 3.5 liter is still very reliable, but doesn't have any major oil issues, at least not across the board. And so if you want reliability, if you want power, if you want just the better engine, go with the 3.5 liter V6, you will not regret it. Like I said, Paraduit is an automatic transmission. Now, very rarely, you could find one of these in manual. And if I ever review one of these in manual, I will also buy a lottery ticket and hopefully spot a unicorn. But this is the six speed auto, which was an upgrade over the five speed. Last but not least, this is front wheel drive. We never got an all wheel drive Camry here in the United States during this era. However, there actually was one over in Japan which is very neat. So how does it feel to drive a Toyota Camry from 2010? Well, the dynamics of it are rather bland. I don't think I'm writing any new thesis here, but it is a decent and nice ride. If you do want a comfier ride, Lexus products of this era are a little bit comfier, and we'll talk about that a little bit later on. But the V6 is really the centerpiece when it comes to this car and how it drives. just spun tire <laughs> now it is pretty cold today it's actually really flipping cold today but this thing moves it doesn't mess around that is really nice to see and feel out of a camry I dig that. I dig that a lot. With that stuff out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have four gauges and a screen. Off to the left is my coolant temperature and tachometer. Off to the right is my speedometer and fuel. And then I get that little digital odometer. Again, 2010, this is where we we're starting to dip our toe into digital dashes. Here in 2024, pretty much every car has a digi dash, but back in 2010 wasn't quite the case. So this was kind of new age tech at the time. On the steering wheel on the left we do have our volume skip track mode and phone options and off to the right we have our temperature love to see this on the steering wheel not enough cars have temperature controls on the steering wheel which i am changing all the time so that would be really nice to have and down below we have the display and voice commands and a cruise control stock to the bottom right the steering wheel is fine it's not anything too crazy i don't love it i don't hate it off to the left we do have a climate control vent power mirror switches along with this little pop out storage cubby and our traction control off button moving out of the door we get this really nice lexus style wood accent Really nice part of the XLE, along with our window locks, door locks, and power windows, all of which are auto. Moving into the center, we do have a clock way up on the dash, a nice little digital clock, love to see that. Two climate control vents surrounding the hazard switch. The radio, we do have a CD player, as well as an aux input 
Very nice to see that. And our climate controls. We get dual zone climate, which was nice to see not only for 2010, but in a Camry. And then we have a big garage door revealing a big cubby with the USB slash aux input and 12 volt outlet at the way back. Moving up in front of that, we do have our heated seat options, which I am pleasantly enjoying here today. Even after 236,000 miles, the heated seats still work. We have our shifter off to the left. I call this the jigsaw shifter. Kind of reminds me of jigsaw puzzle very standard Toyota equipment. They use this for over 20 years, and even in some of their modern 2024 vehicles, they're still using the shifter, so you know it works pretty well. And off to the right, we do have cup holders, so we will do a big friggin' bottle test here in the Camry XLE from 2010. And unfortunately, you could tell just by looking at it that it does fail the big friggin' bottle test, but hey, I'm not gonna let that smear my love for the Toyota Camry. <laughs> Then we do get an openable third cubby with a 12 volt outlet in there. We do get a center console and we'll talk about the seats. The seats are leather. This is a higher trim level, so it gets the leather seats. They are heated and power, which is all lovely, lovely, lovely. I've really enjoyed my sitting experience here in the Toyota Camry, which is more than what I can say for a lot of other cars. However, before we talk about the back seats, I do wanna talk about the sunroof. I normally don't talk about sunroofs here in my videos because they're all the same, but this one's a little bit different. These cars have a common issue where over time, something breaks down in the sunroof. And so when you try to open it, it will actually catch on itself at some random point and dent your roof by itself. And so if I can give any buying advice, buy the V6, but maybe try to find a V6 either without a sunroof or just live with the fact of knowing that your sunroof is probably not going to be usable. So a little bit of buying advice there. However, let's hop into the back and talk about the back seats. All right, so in the back of the 2010 Toyota Camry XLE V6, if you want to add that onto the name. Anyway, back seat space is wonderful. This has always been one of the biggest, biggest drawing points for me, at least to the Camry over the Corolla. Now the V6 is another huge drawing point because they never made a Corolla with a V6. Back seat space is very good. Sitting up straight, I'm 5'11", not a small guy. My head is not hitting the ceiling and there's even a little bit of a saggy headliner going on here. So it's even lower on the camera than it actually is. Knees are not hitting the seat in front of me. I get nice wood accents on the door as well. I get climate vents back here. A lot of sedans don't do that. So very nice to see that the Camry does. Pull down center armrests with pop out cup holders that don't eh, kind of ish fit a lot better than the front ones. The front ones, those look like an afterthought. Those would fit like a Red Bull can, that's it. And there is a pass through back here into the trunk. If you can see that camera guy anyway, Back seat is really nice. There's no like flare or craziness back here. That's not really the mantra of the Camry. The Camry is simple, basic transportation that won't leave you stranded and not a whole lot else. So pretty run of the mill back here. Let's hop out. We'll take a quick look at the trunk and cargo space, and then we'll talk about the looks. All right, around the back of the Camry XLE, we do have a little trunk button on the key fob. And it does, oh, pops it up a pretty good amount. So pop it up the rest of the way. And here is the trunk of the Camry. Pretty large. I don't get any like crazy amenities back here. It's not going to serve me breakfast, lunch, or dinner, but that is okay. Tons of space. Really like to see this in the back of sedans. A dying segment here in 2024. Really, really nice. Uh, I don't really know what else to say. I can pull this up if you want. A little stuff down there spare tire it does get a spare tire because most cars in this era did but now most modern cars don't so interesting to see but there's the trunk space of a toyota camry for anyone that was curious now we got to talk about the looks and i am so thankful to be driving this generation of camry that isn't silver the other two that i've driven have just been silver 2007s so it's actually nice to see some color on toyota's palette today I think these are fine. I don't think that they're really handsome cars. However, this is the Camry that I grew up around. 2010, I was in sixth grade. And so a lot of friends' parents had these cars. They were in the parking lots of the 7-Eleven and Speedway gas stations we used to ride our bikes to to get Slurpees. So there is that warm sense of nostalgia, very much macaroni styling here for the Camry. But overall, I don't think it wins any design contests. With all of that being said, let's get on to my final thoughts. What do I think driving the 2010 
Toyota Camry XLE. Well, this isn't anything particularly new for me. Like I said, I've driven two of this generation in the past. I've even driven the inline four and the V6. Nothing terribly new. But I wanted to make this video because I get asked all the time, Zach, I want to buy a Camry, but there's also a Lexus ES for sale. What do I do? So here's my answer. Buy whichever one has the least amount of mileage. Now, if you do want to buy a Camry, you want to seek out a Camry, be sure to get the V6 and try to get one without a sunroof. If you can't, just know that it's probably going to be problematic later on and you'll have to live with that. Buy the V6, buy the V6, buy the V6. Yes, it's going to get worse fuel economy, but that is A-OK -okay in my book. The trade-off is reliability and power, and I think those are more important. Now, if a Lexus ES comes up for sale of the same era, same price, should you go with that car? Yeah, it's probably going to be a little bit nicer, but you're gonna have to factor in the mileage, ownership care, etc. I would much rather own a high mileage Camry than a beat the snot out of Lexus just for the badge. Because really in here, I have the heated seats, I have wood grain, I have the sunroof, I have the CD and aux player. There's not a whole lot that the ES is gonna have on top of this. Maybe the ride quality, but even at that point, you're kind of grasping at straws here. Either car is going to be a good purchase. And I hope with the making of this video, I made your purchase decision just a little bit easier. Either way, you're doing the right thing and getting the right car. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Carl for letting me take out his Camry. I have reviewed so many of Carl's cars in the past. Carl's been an absolute wonderful person to work with. Huge asset to the channel, and I cannot thank him enough for all that he's done. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.